Hey guys, what's up? This is Abe and welcome back to a brand new video. So for today's video, we will be talking about how well the GTX 650 graphics card performs well with today's demanding and well-known games. Now, the GTX 650 that I have is the Palette 1 gig Single Fan Edition. Now, just a quick backstory about how I got this GPU. So I got this back in 2016 as I was looking for a budget replacement card for my aging GT220 GPU which wasn't doing me much justice in most games. So just a quick info regarding the 220, uh, it does not support DX11 which is required in most games such as Fallout 4. Now being a fan of the Fallout series, I just had to find a way to play it. So what I did was I went to OLX which is a buy and sell website for new and used stuff uh, to search for a budget GPU. Now I found the GTX 650 which was priced at around 2,000 pesos or around 38 US dollars which is not a bad deal from where I'm from which is the Philippines. Going over some quick specs of the card, uh, this card was released back in 2012 and is based on the Kepler architecture. Uh, it has 384 CUDA cores with 1058 MHz base clock and requires a 6 pin connector connected to a 400 watt power supply. Uh, this is the minimum system power requirement of the card. Now the system we are using it with is my main system which has an i5-4460 clocked at 3.2 GHz and 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Going over to some gaming benchmarks, I started out with a light game, particularly CSGO which is a widely played game today. Um, for the settings, I set everything to high with VSync and motion blur disabled. This got me around 90 to 100 FPS and sometimes dips down to around 70 FPS. So lowering the settings down a bit could provide a more stable FPS, sacrificing visual quality. Now another game we tried is Fortnite which is another game that isn't particularly demanding on your system. Now for the settings, I set the quality to high with VSync and motion blur off as well. This got me a stable 30 FPS, however lowering down the settings to around medium or low could provide you with more FPS, sacrificing visual quality for performance. Let's now go for some slightly more demanding games such as PUBG. Now PUBG is notorious for bringing most budget builds to its knees. There are some bugs and optimization issues that still needs to be addressed in the game. Now for the settings, I set the overall quality to custom with anti-aliasing, post-processing, textures and effects, and foliage down to low, with shadows and view distance to very low. Uh, once again, VSync and motion blur is turned off. This got me around 27 to 30 FPS with dips to around 11 FPS and some major stuttering. Still, the gameplay experience wasn't so bad. Now, let's go to even more demanding and newer titles such as Far Cry 5. Now, Far Cry 5 was released just this 2018. Now this was a game which I was expecting not to run at all, however to my surprise it did. With the overall graphic settings set to low, I got around 20 to 22 FPS during action packed scenes. However just walking around the game, enjoying the scenery and all that, um, I got around 30 FPS which isn't a bad thing especially for budget gamers like me. The last game we will be trying out is Assassin's Creed Origins which was released back in October 2017. Another highly demanding game which I thought would not run. However, with the overall graphics quality set to very low and with ambient occlusion and depth of field off, I got an average of around 20 to 24 FPS with dips going down to 17 FPS. Again, acceptable frame rates for those budget gamers like me. So there you guys have it, gaming on a GTX 650. All we can say is that it is still a very capable card in 2018. However, if you plan to upgrade from another lower end card, I would advise you to get something more powerful such as the GTX 750 Ti or the newer 1050 Ti, as the 650 is already showing its age in most games. And with newer games coming out every year, the requirements of these games get even more demanding as the years go by. Which isn't really a good news for budget gamers who have cards like the GTX 650 or even lower. However, if you're the type of gamer who enjoys games that are not highly demanding on the system such as CSGO, Dota 2, LOL, or even Fortnite, then the GTX 650 will be able to handle those games quite well with settings set to medium or even high. 
However, if you're the type of gamer who enjoys AAA games with everything set to ultra and with 60 FPS, I would advise you to stay away from this card and to go for something even more powerful such as the 1060, 1070, or the 1080 Ti. So there you guys have it, the GTX 651GB version. Is it a capable card? Yes, it's still a very capable card as shown on some benchmarks. Is it a powerful card? Well, in 2018, not anymore. However, if you do plan on getting this card this year or next years to come, I would advise you to get the 2 gig version. So that concludes today's video. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did like the video, hit that like button. If you did not like it, hit that dislike button. And if you're new to my channel and enjoy my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or suggestions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. So I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace out.